Tell me a little bit about how the idea for Civics Day began and how long it's been brewing. Okay, so it's been brewing a long time. Um, this is the second annual one. State Representative DiZoglio wanted to come in. Uh, I had her come in and before you knew it, she invited some judges and then a representative from jury duty. Uh, that was last year. And then I wanted to amp it up a little bit more this year, so I brought in town and local governments. So um, the town manager is here, the town moderator, and Dr. Jen Price, the superintendent of schools. So it's really grown and gotten a lot bigger. Um, and I, who knows, maybe next year we'll have even more people come. Awesome. And can you speak briefly about what Jennifer Price and Andrew Mailer had to say today? Maybe a couple nuggets for us to hear. I think they really worked about how to work in government and be functional and successful. Uh, it was obvious to me that, that, that when they worked together, they were their, their relationship looked it was fantastic. So they mainly talked about how important it is to have the personal skills to work together as a team and move forward. They also did an amazing job of answering the kids' questions. Um, they were willing to answer just about anything, and actually they cut their time short to answer more questions. So, I mean, they must have answered about, I don't know, 30 questions. Just for my kids, multiply that times three for the other two teams. So them being willing to do that, I was very, very impressed with. That's awesome. So you're speaking about the kids' involvement. I'd like to talk a little bit about that, kind of what the lead-up has been in the classroom preparing them for Civics Day, yeah. the second annual Civics Day, um, and sort of what they've been talking about on a daily basis in your class. Great. So we do civics every year. We start out with the Constitution, and then we get into the federal government, state, and local. And state and local always kind of comes at the end of the year, so you're kind of rushing and trying to get through it. So when State Representative DiZoglio came in, I said, this is great. Uh, we can kill two birds with one stone and have her come in and, and do her thing and then I can give the kids an introduction and then literally the politicians are teaching the kids civics, not me. And I think it means a lot coming from them because they have the daily experience. I can talk about how a bill becomes a law, but when Representative DiZoglio literally does it, it comes a lot more alive to the kids. So that's pretty much how um, I've got involved with the kids. Awesome. I love that. You said a minute ago in our little prep chat about the fact that kids like that hands-on experience and they like to be able to learn and see how it's applied in the real world. Is there any one particular student that has had an experience you think that stood out? One that you think, oh man, this student might go into something like this, might go into law or study poli-sci. On the short term, I had a student, Jodell, this year, in one of his questions and comments, quote the preamble of the Constitution, which completely blew me away, talking about domestic tranquility. And then I had a student last year, uh, Caitlin, who is actually an intern for Representative DiZoglio. In fact, she's the youngest intern in the history of the State House. She's here today. She introduced her. So it was very moving to see her and what she's doing. And it kind of came from conversations that we had in class. I also invited about maybe six other ninth graders to come and they were all about helping out with the community and getting involved and uh, they're here today and um, it's great it's fantastic awesome so any last closing thoughts or remarks that you'd like to make closing remarks is hopefully we'll do civics day next year so anyone watching if you're a parent or if you're a younger student hopefully this is something you're going to be doing someday and uh, i hope it just gets bigger and better and we get more and more people involved in the community and uh, Thank all the speakers and everyone that came out for it. I couldn't have done it without them, and it's just a huge success. And one last note, if they want to get involved, let's say it's another student from a different school or in the high school, is there a website that they can go to? Uh, there isn't a website. I mean, they could probably go on Representative DiZoglio's website, or they can go on the North Andover Middle School website and click on my name, Patrick McGravy, and that'll go right to my email. And then if we have speakers out there that want to volunteer their time or people watching from other school districts that maybe might want to mirror this in another city or town, I'd be more than happy to have another community do it. Hi, I'm Caitlin Parks. Um, Mr. McGravy definitely had a huge influence on me and definitely made me fall in love with history and social studies. And now that's what I want to do with my life. I want to go and I want to work at the White House as I get older. And he's just such a wonderful teacher and incorporates uh, modern things into learning about the Revolutionary War and about the Founding Fathers, and it's just so great. So he makes it really easy for students to understand. So talk a little bit about the hands-on experience today, actually being able to see Representative DiZoglio. I mean, you see it all the time because you intern at the State House, but what was it like seeing it here at your school today? 
It's so great to see Representative Zoglio talking to the kids. She has a huge role in education in the community. It's so great to see her uh, giving back and just getting more kids involved in politics and just showing the kids what is really going on in the world. That's wonderful. And can you talk a little bit about your internship? First, how you got involved, who kind of hooked you up with that, or did you find it on your own? And then what it's like to be working there and what you do on a daily basis. Uh, we met Representative Gisoglio, my family and I, at an event, and she saw right away how interested I was in politics and said, this would be a great opportunity for you. I went in, I took the train in every day last summer, and I just fell in love with it. I love the building and just helping people and helping consist constituents. It's just so great. This year, I was invited back to do it again, and I'm her intern chief of staff now, which is very exciting. I'm one of the youngest ones, and I just love every minute of it. So five-year plan, and we can kind of talk about this on a closing note. So obviously, you're just a freshman in high school. You're soon to be a sophomore, which is super exciting. You already have a ton of experience. Guys, she's interning as a freshman in high school. I mean, I think most of us don't even think about doing that until we're freshmen in college, honestly, you know, if you really think about that. So your five-year plan. Where do you see yourself going? Do you have an idea of where you might want to go to school? And if it's too personal, you don't have to answer. And otherwise, what's your ideal career goal? Kind of on a closing note. Yeah, um, I've started watching The West Wing with my family, and I definitely want to work at the White House. It would be so amazing to be on the president's senior staff. It's like a huge long-term goal of mine. Um, I want to go to Dartmouth College. Um, I love DC, and it'd be great to spend some time there and uh, study politics. Awesome. Well, I wish you the best. You clearly have a very bright future ahead. Another North Andover NAMS alumni here in Mr. McGravy's classroom. Lots of great things start here. And again, Pat McGravy is super passionate about history and really lights a spark in students like Caitlin and myself. So thanks so much for watching. We're here at Civics Day at North Andover Middle School. Morgan Healy here with Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Jennifer Price at the North Andover Middle School. Thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. So it is Civics Day here at the Middle School. Tell us a little bit about your experience today. Yeah, it was really great. Part of the Civics uh, experience was talking about lo local government. So I got to talk with uh, our town manager, our amazing town manager, Andrew Mailer, and our town moderator, Mark DeSalvo. And it was really a fun day to talk to kids about how local government really matters and to explain to them that what may seem like us out there actually impacts them on a daily basis. So it was really fun. And the kids were great. I mean, I'm the superintendent, so I, can I brag a little? Um, the kids were just absolutely really wonderful, really well prepared, thoughtful questions. They asked questions that I didn't even know the answer to. I wonder if many of the residents of North Andover actually know what happens if there's a tie at town meeting. Right. Right, exactly. So, I mean, I thought that was a pretty impressive question. And uh, if you get Mark DeSalvo, you might be able to get him to give you the answer. Awesome. Thank you so much. So glad that you're here. And as always, tune in to the journal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here at North Andover Middle School for Civics Day, standing with Judge Mark Sullivan. Please tell us a little bit about your experience today and what brought you here to Civics Day at North Andover Middle School. Well, it was a great experience. Got to sit down and uh, meet with uh, all the eighth graders today and talk about our, uh, our judicial system. Uh, I got to talk a little bit about my job. I've been a uh, district court judge in Lawrence for about 10 years, just over 10 years, and um, I enjoy the work. It's a community-based court. Our court takes in uh, all the surrounding towns to include North Andover, it takes in Lawrence, North Andover, Andover, and Methuen. And um, we see all the crime that's, uh, that's happening out there. It comes before us uh, into our courtroom, and that's where the uh, criminal process begins. And what was it like interacting with the students and being able to teach them a little bit about the process? I mean, I know that you were on a panel. Um, maybe one or two words about what you spoke about this morning here at the middle school. We talked a little bit about uh, why I became a judge and the process and, uh, involved in becoming a judge. We also talked about the uh, judicial system, the type of work that we do. I was here with uh, the presiding judge, Judge Lynn Rooney. Uh, she's, a, she's a great uh, presiding judge. We work in Lawrence with about four or five uh, judges on a given day. Uh, we handle a lot of work, uh, as you can imagine. It's a busy urban court. And uh, we try to um, uh, share some of that with the kids. They ask some great questions about the work that we do. Uh, they asked us about the, some of the stranger cases, some of the more interesting cases uh, that we've had in our years on the bench. Um, so they were engaged uh, and they were fun. That's awesome. They were good. Yep. Good. Well, I'm so glad it was a great day. Clearly the periods are changing here at North Andover Middle School, so everyone has to get back into this classroom. Thank you for taking a minute to speak with us. He's got to get back to work. So that's a wrap.
Wow, so we are still at the Civics Day here at North Andover Middle School, and we were talking a minute ago with Judge Sullivan and Dr. Jennifer Price about, hey, what happens if there's a tie in town meeting? And the students, I'm sure, are extremely curious about that controversy and want to learn more. So what can you tell us in the event that that happens? Well, that's very interesting. Uh, it's only the second time that I've had that question from anybody, and the first time was by a student on this day, as a matter of fact. So in all the time that I've been town uh, moderator, not a soul has ever asked me that question. What happens in the case of a tie, most moderators choose to vote along with everybody else. And I've made the judgment that I owe, because of my public profile, the responsibility to not vote and to only vote as moderator to make or break a tie. And that way be totally on the record, like everybody else, as to what my vote is. So if there happens to be, uh, I'll make up the numbers, uh, uh, 199 to 198 vote, I can choose to vote to make it a tie, therefore the action would fail. Or if it's a 199 to 199 vote, I would vote yes or no and then make the judgment unilaterally and do so publicly from the podium after everyone has voted. So interesting. I would have never known that. And obviously our kids are going to definitely want to see that in the promo. So they're going to have to see this on the journal and stay tuned on the camps. So the kids are the ones who asked the very first time today that I've ever been asked that question. It's interesting. I feel like people would want to know. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking a minute to speak with us. Thank you for uh, doing what you do and afford the kids and the community this opportunity. It's truly greatly appreciated. Work hard, everybody. Thank you. Awesome. You heard the man. Work hard. We're here at North Andover Middle School for Civics Day, and I believe that's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Bye -bye. Awesome. Good ending. I like that.